but basically it's a simple way of doing a patio, as simple as simple can be, using string and a little bit of willpower. You could do it either dry or wet. I prefer wet, which mean, is meaning cement, but you can do either way. But the, the thing to take home is the strategy of using a string to do circles. And this is two, so one, two, three, four. Four different circles all together to make this kind of design using uh, slate and slag. So I hope you enjoy the video. This is a trick to do a circle, make a perfect circle. I use this with um, my berry garden to do the, the pergola sand pit and um, the placement of bushes around so it was a good circle. Bushes and were a little difficult because I had a snag because I did the pergola first. But you can do a perfect circle with this strategy. Basically, you tie string to a piece of metal. Um, I use these things I found in the garage or anything like a stick. And then you have the string. So I'm going to get to it. So you kind of get a estimate of half the the width you want. Uh, so you plop, I plopped my string down to the edge of where I wanted uh, the end to be, the end of the patio, and then I tried to find the center of where I wanted the center to be, and I, I jammed the stick or the, the piece of metal in the ground. Then I went around all of the radius, seeing how I liked it, uh, seeing what I wanted to to be less or more or longer or shorter and I decided to move the center point and then I went around again just checking to see where I wanted the patio. Once I found the perfect center point and the actual width of the patio I wanted, I cut my string and then I went to get my shovel. Now you could do this in two different ways. I'm taking the lazy approach, so I'm straight digging. So I'm seeing where the string, the end of the string is, moving it around, digging. So I'm digging the whole radius first um, so that to get the actual dimensions. Uh, it's probably better if you use spray paint or to actually get a clear idea and then dig, but it's much quicker to do the way I'm doing. And it is a corner cutting, but I believe sometimes it's good to cut corners. It's good to get it just done. See, I left the center as the last bit I'm going to shovel out, so the pin remains. It's um, not level, and this is the trick. See, my house is here, and then it gradually goes down hill here. And I don't want water to pull into the house, so I'm going to have the patio be not entirely level. Um, but I'm going to try to rake this out and then figure out how much I want the um, it to go downhill with the actual patio and I'm going to figure that out with the gravel. I think I'm going to have to bring out the leveling um, 
leveler. I have a giant one for masonry that's pretty epically huge. <laughs> So this garden has been created all with the same string. It's much bigger, so what I did was I, I put sticks in the ground where the string landed and then I did, did the digging. Um, the planting is not done yet, I mean this section is older. So what it is, it is, is three circles. Uh, the first circle is going all the way around with blueberries, I don't know if you could see that. and. There's entrances that eventually will all be these um, these dwarf pines. So the second is these raspberry uh, pergolas and goji berries. And they all have little patterns, totally symmetrical. And I was able to do this with the string. And the centerpiece, which is perfectly circular, it, it's easier the closer you get. That was also used with a string, was the first placement, and it's a sand pit pergola for, for my kids to play in with kiwi, cold hearted kiwi. I have the center, I put it back in the center just to give them a good radius, and I'm, I have my spray paint right here. And what I'm going to do is take that spray paint, attach it to the string. to two different circles. Um, so I have a circle here and another circle so around here. And that's gonna give me like a kind of pattern because I kind of want a circle of slag and then a circle of slag in the center. It works out. So as you can see it kind of worked out. Now the video kind of malfunctioned of me trying to do this. I tried to videotape it to show you, but basically I attached the spray paint to the string. Actually I found that the string kept on moving, so I held it, attached it to my finger and the spray paint bottle, and I got a good grip. It was kind of hard shaking it because uh, it's spray paint, so I had to shake it and that kind of was difficult because when you're spray painting something you kind of naturally shake it and spray, shake and spray. And doing the circle you kind of had to keep it still. So I had some little hiccups there but it came out nice and I made a pretty nice pattern to start working. I'm first laying down as much of the slate I can dry before I put on the cement. So this is the patio so far. What I do is I put the cement underneath and just stamp on it, flattening it, the whole surface, using my gloves to rub the cement all in. And I didn't, I ran out of phone battery yesterday so I didn't get to record the cement part, but uh, here it is. It's going pretty quickly. dry, meaning with no cement. Then I go through and I pick up the piece of slate, put the cement where I want it to be, and then put the slate back on top of the cement. The strategy I, I think works best, so you get the pattern pretty clearly and you're not moving things around and getting everything dirty with cement.
So here's a close-up of what I've been doing. Now the rain has turned this all to like a, kind of a nasty mush, so you can't see what's going on at all. So it's probably unsatisfying to watch. <laughs> but um, the problem is I need to let this dry a bit before I wash it off. And it's um, not drying because of the moisture, so I think I'm gonna take a break videoing, continue, and then do something of washing it off. But um, what's going on, I, I'm doing this kind of sun thing that my daughter and I kind of created together, I guess. She was three years old, but she was helping. <laughs> and in between is just a hodgepodge of the slate until it gets to be about, I would say two to three inches, um, give or take around the circle. And summer, it gets a little bit less here and a little bit more there. And that is filled in with slag. So slag is this colored stuff that I get from the river. It's a byproduct of um, the iron industry. And maybe I'll do a little video on that as well sometime on slag. And I like to use slag as detailing throughout the wandering peacocks. The colors are, are really cool. They're, they're like this iridescent glass of um, kind of like carnival glass colors, you know, dark greens, kind of a turquoise, turquoise color, uh, purples. They're really quite remarkable. So I'll get back to this in a minute. But here's slag that I used in another project. So you can see the colors. They are um, beautiful green, very iridescent, purple, some little bit of white splash in there. That one's really beautiful how it glows, almost like an opal. Little turquoise color very like em dark emerald green, all different colors. And this is really a fun material. And I think it's kind of cool to use whatever material is around you. You know, we have slag, but you might live somewhere else and have some other kind of stone from your area. And I think getting these special little stones and plugging in them, it really, um, gives tribute to where you live and the land around you. And I think it, that's just kind of a beautiful thing. I know we go to Home Depot and we get the same kind of, um, same kind of stuff. And it's very uniform across the country. So it's, it's kind of nice to have something local that you forge. So this is something I don't normally do, which is wiping off the cement residue well after it's dried and I have to use this metal brush to get at it. It's really kind of a pain. I usually like to let it sit and dry for maybe an hour or two and then wipe it off with the hose and just really get this, the stones and the cement deep within the cracks. So this other way of doing it is kind of unfortunate but it was raining so hard and I really didn't have much of an option. This is the pattern and this is the slag. I'll just show you the close up. So this is what it kind of looks like coming out of the river. It's very beautiful, iridescent. And I like how it looks with the slate. It's not super, super bright, but it has this pop. So it looks a little bit like earth gems. It doesn't look like it belongs, but yet it looks like it kind of belongs. So the table I bought is gonna go in the center. I still need to finish this part and I will videotape it because unlike uh, the other day where it was just like a mess, this I think will be, you could actually see what's going on a little bit and how the, the placement of the slag is done. Now for the slag, I'm just putting in a whole bunch of cement making it flush with the slate. 
Then I'm gently pounding in the slag into the bed of cement, wiping off the excess with my uh, glove. So again, I hope you enjoy the video. Um, a little bit more about the project. This is all used recycled material uh, that was dumped at a quarry, the slate. That's why it's all broken up. And these right here, again, they're slags. And the concentric circle idea worked out well with the string. Uh, afterwards, we brought in this beautiful stone table. It's a see no evil, hear no evil stone table with a Asian um, Chinese zodiac on top. Thank you for watching this do-it-yourself video on how to do a round patio. Now you could do this with a string and just have gravel or dirt or tile or brick. So it doesn't have to be even with concrete or cement or mortar mix. It could just be whatever you want it to be. But the string is a really cool idea to give a guidance of a circle. So hope you'll enjoy and check out some more videos.